What professionals the world over have referred to as colour management, frankly, has always been a difficult task unless you have a degree in the science of colours, inks and printing. However, Corel have forged a tremendous approach to colour management in X5. In my personal opinion, it has achieved a level of simplicity that I have never previously experienced. Check out the new document palette. The new document palette allows us to manage all of the colours within our working document. If this doesn't display on first opening Corel Draw, come to the window menu, colour palettes and document palette. The reason there are no colours in this at the moment is we haven't decided how to add them. For example, I can choose the little drop down and simply add from document. Now all of the colours within my document have been added. If I were to import an image such as a bitmap photograph, I can drag that over the palette. I'm asked how many colours to add and if I choose for example 25, click OK, those colours have been added. If automatically update is turned on, Every time I add an additional colour now to my working area, well that colour is added to the palette. Now when I save my document, the palette will be saved and of course this maintains the colour integrity for the lifetime of the document. Default colour management now has a brand new engine found under Tools, Colour Management and Default Settings. Colour management allows me to do things like when I open a document that is untagged or does not contain a colour profile, what the colours are that will be assigned to that document when opened in X5. Or when I import or paste a document from the clipboard, how will the colours in that document be converted? Colour management gives you complete control over your colour. The new Document Colour Settings dialog found under Tools, Colour Management and Document Settings allows you to adjust colour settings that apply only to the current document you're working on. The top section displays for us the colour profiles that we presently have selected and the bottom section allows us to assign different colour profiles or convert our colours. For example, if our document has been used for professional print but now it's going to be printed on a uh, wide format printer, we may choose to convert to a different colour profile which will produce a better end result. And note the primary colour mode sets the default colours. It sets the default colour palette over here on the side and it also sets the default output mode when converting or exporting to bitmaps. The new colour proof settings docker allows us to create what we call a soft proof which is an on-screen preview of a document as it will appear when it is reproduced by a specific printer or displayed on a specific monitor. For example, if this image were sent to someone who was working, for example, in this colour environment, notice the instant change in the image. If I were to turn on the out of gamut colours, determined by the colour I've chosen here, I can see all of the areas that this colour space will have problems with. In fact, they're also highlighted throughout my colour palette. Choosing an alternate, as you can see, there are still a number of colours out of gamut. However, if I have no alternative, but I have to send off to this end printer, it's best if I create a soft proof. So I can actually create a PDF file or a JPEG to send to my printer, so both my printer and I have a reasonable example of what we should expect as the final result. X5 now provides multiple options for viewing hexadecimal colour values which is very important when you're working on the web. For example, if I turn on the colour docker, I'll then select this image here, automatically the RGB value updates and I can see the hex value here. Well, if I type in an alternate value, click fill, I can have an absolute accurate hexadecimal result. I can also see the hex value displayed down in the status bar. And if I were to choose the eyedropper tool, when I hover, I can see the RGB and hex value. And here I can see the starting hex value and the end hex value. If I hover over a CMYK image, of course, I see the CMYK result. And finally, again selecting my image, if I were to open the uniform fill dialog box, we can see the hex value, we can adjust accordingly, and so on. Well, that certainly makes working with hex values a lot simpler. 
The eyedropper tool has now been conveniently added to a number of different areas. For example, you can see we now have an eyedropper tool on every color palette. I can sample a color and add that color to the palette and so on. I can select an object, open the uniform fill dialog box and I can select my eyedropper tool here and of course I could conveniently sample a color from another area and when I'm happy click OK and of course it's applied to that object. With the eyedropper tool selected the eyedropper comes up immediately and I can simply click and drag. Now I'm dragging my mouse release and I've sampled and dragged that color to an alternate location. Now also there's another eyedropper tool it's called the attributes eyedropper. We can actually sample attributes. On the property bar, choose the attributes that you want to sample. Now what this really means is, in my case I've got outline and fill selected, when I click on this rectangle, the attributes of the fill and the outline etc are now sampled and I can apply them to this last rectangle. So that means I now have the identical blend and the outline color is also the same. Very, very handy.